<laughs> um, that that can't be right. Nah, 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 nah. We can't be drawing that much from the <laughs> from the RGB alone. Today we're setting out on a mission to find out exactly how much power my entire gaming setup draws from the wall and just how much of that comes from the monitors, how much of that comes from the PC, the LED light strip, the wall lights from GoV, and how big or small of an impact does the RGB lighting alone make to your total power draw? Because in my case, it makes quite the difference, you know? And we're gonna do all that through today's video sponsor, Blue Etty, who sent me an entire power station that can not only charge my laptop over and over again, but I can even plug my triple monitor PC setup into and power all of it, even whilst editing videos. However, when I powered everything down, I quickly noticed that we're still drawing just under 100 watts, despite the PC not even being turned on. But of course, that is most likely the LED light strips and the GoV wall lights. So if we turn those two off, we drop the wattage all the way down to about 40 watts. But that's still quite a lot, given that everything's meant to be turned off right now. So I'm going to take the Razer Raptor monitor out of the equation and turn that off, which actually dropped the wattage all the way down to 15 watts. However, it does fluctuate between 15 and 16. And I have a feeling it's because of the LED lights in my actual PC build. So if we turn the PC build off as well, the wattage finally then drops to about five which is quite reasonable given that everything's pretty much turned off but if you truly want the peace of mind of knowing that your setup is actually drawing near zero watts of power and you're not just wasting electricity then i highly recommend you plug either your entire desk setup or just parts of it into smart plugs and control it using something like this allowing you to whenever you want just turn off the led light strip in your desk turn off the wall lights on your wall or you could even go as far as plugging in all three of your monitors into this thing and be able to control those wirelessly at any time turn them on or off using a device like this alternatively you could also pick up one of these controllers and do more or less the same thing it's just that you'll only be able to control one smart plug at a time whereas with something like this you can pair up four different smart plugs to this thing and also be able to control a light bulb or any other Philips Hue LED light strip or LED light of that sort and be able to twist this dial here and sort of increase or decrease the brightness of some sort of LED light from Philips Hue. At the moment though, I've currently plugged in my Govi M1 LED light strip that has been cut down to two meters long. That is behind my desk set up there into the Blue Etty EB55 power station to see how much power the LED light strip on its own is drawing from the wall. And that actually varies quite a lot depending on what LED lighting effect you have enabled on the light strip. So if I, for example, set everything to the color white, we pull a whopping 24 watts on this two meter strip. However, if I set it to a blue or a red, we're only looking at around 10 watts, which is a big drop in power. And if you wanna go really eco-friendly and drop the wattage to the least amount possible while still being on 100% brightness, then if you go for the color green, you'll only pull just 8.9 watts, which is pretty damn good. However, what happens when we set the LED light strip to have an animated lighting effect like the rainbow wave? Well, we actually don't draw that much more power. We're only looking at around 10 to maybe 15 watts at most. I honestly kind of expected it to possibly draw a little bit more power on like an animated lighting effect given that the lights are constantly changing colors. But to my surprise, no, it actually draws very little power. And then we have the Govi Glide wall lights up above the desk setup here, consisting of eight straight pieces and three corner pieces. If I would have to bet, I'd probably say, yeah, they're gonna draw quite a bit more power than the normal Govi M1 LED light strip. Well, on the rainbow mode, it turns out we're only actually pulling about 18 to 19 watts, and it seems to be rather consistent on that wattage, which is actually not too bad. But what if we set everything to a static color? Let's begin with a normal white and see how much that pulls from the wall. All right, 30, 30 watts. If we set it to a deep blue, we're looking at, oh wow, 8.6? What about green? Will green be lower than blue like it was on the GoV M1? No, green on this one raises the wattage to 12.8 and red is 17.5 watts very close to the rainbow mode. Not quite the results I was expecting, especially with the green being low wattage on one, but then being high wattage on another. Let's try it with the nano leaf lights I have here, because there's quite a few of them. I imagine this will draw way more power than the Go V lights probably would combined. So let's plug this into the Blue Etty and see what we pull. All right, so they're currently booting up. Actually, surprisingly good so far. I almost can't believe how little wattage the nano leaves are drawing, given that they're on 100% brightness right now on the color white, and they're pulling 
just under 60 watts. I mean, that's still a decent amount of power, but bear in mind, this is 28 nanoleaf panels plugged into a single power supply. That's actually not too bad. What if though, we set it to the color blue? What are we looking at then? 47, color red, 44. Ah, green is the lowest on the nano leafs at 42.4. And finally, when you set the nano leaf lights to a rainbow multicolor lighting effect that's animated, then you're looking at anywhere from 40 up to 50 watts on average from the results that I've seen on this thing so far. These are really good, very expensive as well, way more expensive than the Go V lights, but also I would say quite a bit more power efficient given how bright they are. I think now that I have a bit more of an understanding of what several devices around here pull in terms of wattage, depending on what color setting they're on, I've plugged in just the PC build alone into the Blue Etty power station. And at the moment, we're just idling. I've tried to turn off as many applications in the background as I could just to hopefully try and settle the wattage, which it's actually kind of worked. We seem to average at around 237 to 238 watts with every single LED light in there currently set to a cool white. However, if I go ahead and turn all of the lights there, including my keyboard, mouse, and all this, we drop the wattage. Wow. <laughs> um, that, that can't be right. Nah, 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 nah. We can't be drawing that much from the, <laughs> from the RGB alone. Dude, <laughs> what? We just lowered the wattage from 237 to 171, 175, what? <laughs> okay, but that was of us disabling not only every single light inside of the actual PC build, but also my peripherals, including my keyboard and my mouse mat, which do, I imagine, contribute to the power draw. But yeah, that is uh, quite the difference. I've now gone ahead and powered up the lights on my keyboard as well, which has contributed anywhere from two to maybe six watts at most. I've now also re-enabled the LED lighting on my mouse mat, but that has actually not contributed much wattage whatsoever. So it seems that even though the gaming keyboard and mouse mat I'm using have a ridiculous amount of lights in there, they really don't make much of a difference to the power draw, maybe five to 10 watts at the very most. But then the LED lights inside of the actual PC build, I'm genuinely shocked by just how much power they're drawing in comparison to the peripherals. This is crazy, man. Okay, I've just set everything to the color red, boom. 199, maybe 200 watts, you could say, on the color red. On the color green, we're pulling 199 watts as well. Maybe 198, very similar. Now we have everything on a deep blue, and once again, we are pulling 198, maybe 200 watts. Nothing seems to change between these three colors. Look at this, everything is on rainbow mode, all of it. And the wattage is practically more or less the same, maybe a couple watts more. It's definitely been very eye-opening to find out the power draw of various things throughout the setup here and some very unexpected results with the PC build especially and just how much wattage we were pulling from the LED lighting inside of the PC build alone. I would of course like to give an enormous thank you to Blue Etty for sponsoring today's video and sending over their EB55 power station. This thing is basically just a very big version of like a normal power bank. The one I have here is rated for 10,000 milliamp hours or 37 watt hours and then we have the blue etty eb55 that has 537 watt hours and of course a whole bunch of other features like wireless charging right on top so boom as you can see we are now wirelessly charging our phone and it should probably start displaying the wattage that we're using as well and then we have of course a bunch of outputs dc 12 volt right here actual ac outlets up to 700 watts we have usb a usb c at 100 watts and of course to charge this thing you have multiple ways of doing it either directly plugging it into the wall and charging it at 200 watts which will take just under three hours from zero to 100%, or you can plug it into your car's 12 volt adapter, you know, one of these basically, but for your car. Alternatively, you could also pick up a Blue Etty solar panel and charge this thing completely on solar power, which is another pretty cool feature. I don't have a solar panel, unfortunately. I just have the big power station here, but this thing has been incredibly handy to have with me on road trips, especially when I'm filming content for my second channel, which I'll leave linked down below in the description. It's just very good having a big battery basically to keep my camera equipment charged, my laptop charged. Genuinely a much more useful product than I first thought it would be, but yeah. 
after I've been traveling a lot over pretty much all of July, this thing has just been incredibly handy to have with me.